All right, so I think we are going to get ready to get started here so we can finish this last match of the Casting Coliseum, our inaugural Casting Coliseum. Uh, our final match of the night is going to be the Motivation versus Jakisha in the house. And let's go ahead and bring up the Motivation screen and we'll take a look at Motivation. Get a little, uh, learn a little bit more about the Motivation. He hails from Niagara Falls, Canada. He is 31 years old. He pray he doesn't get flooded or shard screwed every day. He weaves baskets and does extreme ironing while scuba diving. He's won a draft once, only once, and he thought it was really cool. You can find motivation at twitch.tv forward slash the motivation. Let's take a look at his deck. Uh, motivation is playing a blood diamond deck. Uh, the troops in his deck, he's playing two charge colossus, four of vampire king and vampire princesses, two Fenteo, the brood priests. Uh, one single Uranaz, four Angels of Dawn round out the troops for uh, Motivation's deck action. Or he's playing a uh, two, three Soul Marbles as his constant, his actions. He's playing four Extinctions, four Kills, two Repels, two Martyrs, a single Pride's Fall, two of those powerful Inquisitions, a Pact of Pain, and to round out his resources, playing four Shards of Retribution. His champion is Rutherford Banks with a starting health pool of 23. He has to have double diamond threshold and pay seven to put target troop from your graveyard into play. Dino Tropia breakdown, Blood Diamond Banks for us. Sure thing. Uh, you know, I have to say, um, you know, we I think I think we saw this again. Uh, it was his first deck, very similar, if if not exactly the same. And and the the unique feature of this deck is to me at least how it represents shifting meta we've had uh set three for several months now and still things are changing uh satellution uh, shook it up with a deck that used very similar tech charge colossus on rutherford banks and it's it's so special because outside of a void effect you can keep bring that charge Colossus back charge Colossus, of course is an eight eight four eight but when it comes into play you gain eight charges and rutherford banks you can take a troop from your crypt and just put it immediately into play so you get the charge classes out somehow then it dies you can bring it right back with rutherford it gives you the charges to do it all over again it is a infinite cycle and it really puts a lot of pressure onto uh, onto your opponents now we're seeing it in a blood diamond shell very popular archetype uh played all throughout uh, set two meta and, and even uh, part of the way through through set three. Uh, very strong, lots of removal, focusing on key troops like Vampire King, Fenteo, and uh, Angel of Dawn to provide pressure in the middle to late game. All right, so that is the Motivations Blood Diamond deck. Let's take a look at Jakisha and get a little to, to know a little bit more about Jakisha. Hails from Serbia, Europe is 27 years old, has nine years of TCG experience, likes to play aggro decks uh the highest place finish is 44th in an iq tournament and one interesting fact about jakisha is that he is a free to play player let's take a look at jakisha's deck for the casting coliseum playing a blood diamond deck as well four troops and jakisha's uh main board is two golden avengers four ethereal collars two grim harvesters two bloat caps four emperor's lackeys two gortezumas the high cleric Two Shroom Shaws, a Hop Hero, two Hop Hero Samurais, four Spirit Bound Spies, and two Valiant Escorts. Four actions uh, of Ilgen's Parade are in his deck, along with two kills, a single Abominate, two Martyrs. Uh, looks like we lost the rest of the deck. There we go. Two Meeks, and to round out his resource pool, playing three Shards of Retribution. Champion four, uh, Jakisha is Madam Anana which is a starting health pool of 29, requires a blood and diamond threshold, and pay three target troop you control gets when this dies, create a phantom, and put it into play. Dinotropia, break down this version of a blood diamond deck. So this is focusing a little bit more on, on early aggression. Uh, I think Emperor's Lackey, uh, plus uh, the ability to bring things back with Ethereal Caller. Um, what makes this deck so very interesting is it looks like it's something that's, you know, quote unquote, outside of the meta. It's not what people um, who haven't been following very closely might expect uh, from this type of deck. Nevertheless, in the second to last IQ, we had uh, a deck list, in fact, very similar to this one. Uh, making it to the top eight so it it is a proven deck archetype we're going to see how it holds up against the more traditional form of blood diamond here today 
All right, so let's go ahead and head down to the tournament floor where we have the Motivation versus Jakeisha in our third casting Coliseum matchup of the night. And huge stakes are on the line for Jakeisha. If Jakeisha can win, will win double the draft packs and a set three primal pack. And if Motivation can win, we'll walk away with that set three uh, primal pack. So let's uh, we're going to wait for players to challenge each other uh, for this final matchup of tonight's casting Coliseum. Yes, it's going to be interesting because, you know, on the one hand, they're, they're both playing the same shards, blood and diamond. One, on the other hand, is, is a, how do I put it, late game. Charge Colossus is, is the epitome of late game advantage, whereas you have uh, Jackie Shaw on, on the flip side playing something that's all about early game advantage. So this is really going to be a challenge of late game versus early game, which can overcome the other. Coin toss here is going to decide which player will be able to go first. Coin toss is won by Jakisha, and we'll take a look at opening hands after Jakisha decides to play or draw. Just waiting for the for Jakisha to make a choice. Does decide to play. We'll see opening hands for both players. Starting hand for the motivation is double blood shard and inquisition Uranaz. Vampire King, Vampire Princess times two. Opening hand for Jakisha is a Blood Shard, Double Diamond, Meek, Ethereal Collar, Blue Cap, and a Gordazuma, the High Cleric. You know, looking at these two hands, I have to say they're both uh, pretty ideal for the archetype. Uh, Inquisition on the motivation side is strong for control, and that early Gordazuma is strong for Jackie Shaw's uh, aggro, so I like it. Diamond play for Jakisha will pass the turn. Draw for the motivation is a blood shard. Will play a blood shard and will pass the turn back over to Jakisha. So, you know, there's there's a question. Do you toss down uh, the Gordazuma or the bloat cap? Gordazuma is great if you can get uh, the opponent down below 10 health. Because if you can do that, Gordazuma becomes uh, immortal, essentially. It, it gets invincible and it becomes very difficult to remove. Gordazuma is the play for Jakisha. Passes the turn back over to Motivation. Draw is a Martyr. Will play out a Blood Shard. A Martyr is one of those ways you can get rid of a Gordazuma. Doesn't matter what it is if it's transformed into a monument. Inquisition is the play for Motivation. So we're going to be able to select a card to put into Jakisha's Crypt. Looks mm -hmm. like that Meek is going to be uh, sent to the Crypt. And that will end a Motivation's turn. Passes it back over to Jakisha. Yeah, I like the meek choice. Um, you know, with so many vampire princesses, they they get hit pretty hard by meek. Diamond shard is the play for Jakisha, sitting at double diamond, single blood threshold, bloat cap on the board. Go to Zuma, Gorta Zuma, ready to go. Looks like going to activate the champion ability on the bloat cap, and we should see in a swing in with the Gorta Zuma. Strong, uh, strong aggro beginning. I like it. Just taking care of some technical issues on the motivation side with the uh, screen region. So it should be resolved here. Attack phase from Jakisha is inbound. Gordazuma swinging in for two. That's going to bring motivation down to 21. And Jakisha will pass the turn back over to motivation. You know, if I had my druthers, a very early vampire princess or two, I think, uh, is what I would ask for. You know, I, I, I think... The motivation has to be pretty confident with the hand he has currently. Um, as Vampire Princess, you know, Gordazuma might be uh, an aggressive troop on the board, but as long as it doesn't reach that critical point of, of below 10 health, you can just keep on, you know, waiting for an answer that can that can remove it from the board. And it's, it's a pretty safe position to be in. Vampire Princess is a play for motivation. Turn passes back over to Jakisha, who plays a resource and... Uh, plays out a Grim Harvester, going to swing in with the Blow Cap and the Gordazuma. Hard decision here for uh, the motivation as far as the blocks. I was going to block anything. It should be that Blow Cap. Going to block the Blow Cap, going to gain two life, take three damage from Gordazuma, going to sacrifice with the Grim Harvester, which is going to force motivation to discard that Uranaz. Three damage. To motivation, going to bring him down to 17. Great play by Jackie Shaw. The you know the Grim Harvester by sacrificing it prevents any health gain from uh, the Vampire Princess. So Rutherford Banks is now down to 17. Turn passes back to motivation. Plays a second Vampire Princess. 
and will be able to swing in with a vampire princess. Decides not to, though. It's going to pass the turn back over to Jakisha. Jackie Shaw is going to need some way to get rid of uh, at least one of those princesses. And if he gets removal, that'll allow him to swing in. But until he does, he is going to be stuck uh, in a little bit of a holding pattern. Shard of Retribution is played for Jakisha. Sitting at four open resources. There's a little bit of mystery here since we don't know exactly what is in uh, Jackie Shaw's hand at the moment. Looks like our screen region is bugged. So it's, uh, does, does he have that answer? I feel like if he did, he'd be swinging a little bit more aggressively. And indeed, it looks like after the refresh, he does not have that response. So how does he get past uh, the Vampire Princess? If he waits for too long, that'll let motivation get towards that late game, which, we, as we know from, from the deck breakdown, is the stronger uh, stronger position. Looks like a swing in with Gordazuma. That's going to be four damage. Going to double block with the Vampire Princesses to eliminate the threat from Gordazuma. Uh, he is going to lose a Vampire Princess in the process. Goes up to 21 health. An Ethereal Caller from Jakisha is going to bring... Uh, looks like he's going to select the Bloat cap uh, will come back as a phantom and uh, pass the turn back over to motivation. His draw, Soul Marble, will play out a Vampire Princess. No diamond uh, threshold for motivation and has two Vampire Princesses on board facing off against two phantoms and Ethereal Caller. We'll pass the turn back over to Jakisha. Yeah, Adam, I actually really like bringing back the bloat cap because what he's done is created a, a huge wall of flyers. Uh, motivation cannot swing in with uh, with his vampire princesses because anything that he, he does swing in will just be sacrificed. He won't gain any any uh, health, and he'll just keep getting hurt by uh, by that grim harvester. I I think it was a very clever line of play. Absolutely, shard of retribution is the play for Jakisha. Will double up on that phantom. Uh, with the champion power. So when that dies, it will create two phantoms and put them into play. And it looks like a Jakisha uh, not going to attack here, pass the turn back over to motivation. His draw is a shard of retribution of his own. We'll play that out. It will definitely look for that diamond. And he does diamond threshold is now online for the motivation. Soul marble is put onto the board. One resource remaining for the motivation. Soul Marble is going to put a lot of pressure onto Jackie Shaw. He, he needs to start being more aggressive before those counters get all the way up because once it gets up, he's not going to be able to remove anything on the board. Draw for Jakisha is a blood shard. We'll play it now at seven resources for blood, triple diamond uh, threshold, and does not tack and will pass the turn back over to motivation. His draw is an Angel of Dawn. So getting that uh, Shard of Retribution for the Diamond paid off with a free Angel of Dawn for him. He has four resources open as well. Wow, what are the odds? I mean, it's the best feeling if, if you're the one drawing it, of course. Your opponent's got to have a, have a bit of a sinking uh, in their stomach. It's a free 4-4, four, four, steadfast with flight. It is. It can be nasty. It can come out as early as turn two. Mm, passes the turn back over to Jakisha. Draws a Martyr, though, so sitting with a Diamond Shard and Martyr in hand. Seven resources available for Jakisha. And definitely some, some cho choices here with that Martyr. Martyr is an intriguing card because you can use it to not only buff up your own troops, you know, when you have these extra spirits lying around these phantoms, you can use Martyr to buff up everything else. And that can be great for forcing uh, favorable traits um, as well as just forcing damage through. However, motivation does have a pretty good wall of his own. So perhaps, uh, perhaps Jackie Shaw will, will hold it and be more defensive and use it to get rid of uh, major problems on the motivation side. It really depends aggressive or defensive. And an interesting point too, is that uh, motivation does have four resources open he can start powering up that soul marble. Jakisha decides not to attack. At the end of Jakisha's turn, he's going to pump four more resources into the soul marble. It is now halfway to being uh, created. Uh, going to draw another Angel of Dawn. Oh, my <laughs> God. Double Angel of Dawns back to back. That has got to be pretty, pretty good news for motivation. And Jakisha is going, what is going on? Kismet is not my friend. Looks like Motivation going to swing in with that Angel of Dawn 4-4 inbound to Jakisha. 
And so, I mean, you can shunt block or you can use the martyr. I mean, the, the martyr is on a clock. If he plans to use it on uh, on motivations uh, stuff. Wow. Uh, mm. Triple block here from Jakisha and is going to martyr. That's going to make it uh, a 2-2 two, two phantom and a 2-3 ethereal caller. And looks like motivation is thinking to himself, uh, I can do that too. And it looks like he's going to use it on his own vampire princess so he's gonna martyr his own vampire princess gonna give all his troops plus one plus one <laughs> look at those plays grim harvester gonna sacrifice the phantom gets two more phantoms in return And looks like uh, there is not going to be any damage that's going to be dealt. Uh, and uh, two angels, though, and a vampire princess on board for the motivation as he passes it back over to Jakisha. Draw for Jakisha is an Emperor's Lackey. Sitting with a Diamond Shard, Emperor's Lackey. We'll play out that Emperor's Lackey. It is a 5-5 five, five on the board. Diamond Shard left in hand. The difficult, the difficult thing for Jackie Shaw is that um, you know while he does have a board, it is uh, smaller than what the motivation is able to bring to the table, and so he's really losing the opportunity to turn things around. He needs an, a, a, a third, a third angel of dawn. The top <laughs> decks are real for the motivation. Oh my gosh, he is the top deck master of this matchup. Going to pump up Soul Marble up to 10 and activate Soul Armaments. So his troops are even going to be more deadly. 5-6 Vampire Princess and 3-7-7 seven, seven, Angels of Dawn. How do you come back from that? I don't know. I don't know if you can. Going to swing in with all the uh, with the Vampire Princess and both Angel of Dawns. That is 19 damage inbound. That is amazing top decks for the motivation. <laughs> wow. So going to sack block and then sacrifice a Grim Harvester. Jakisha is going to go up to 24, then back down to 17 health. And motivation will pass the turn back over to Jakisha. This is going to be hard for Jakisha to fight back. He needs that extinction. I mean, he, without extinction, we are presenting lethal in the air uh, on the motivation side. So a parade is played. There are two, three, three troops on the board. But unfortunately, none of those can block the flyers. And uh, lethal is represented on the turn for motivation uh, because Jakisha cannot stop those angels or vampire princess. I have my fingers crossed for angel number four. I mean, come on. Oh, <laughs> oh. Doesn't get it, but gets a vampire king. So uh, when you have three angel of dawns and a vampire princess on the board, what makes it better? Just add a vampire king. And going to swing in with the three angels and the vampire princess. No way to block. And the motivation is going to take game number one here against Jakisha. Jakisha going to go ahead and sacrifice the lackey to gain some health. And go down to negative eight. So that's it. Motivation takes game number one here in the casting coliseum. Let's go ahead and take a look at reserves and options that each player could have to uh, reserve into their main deck. Motivation is playing with three Vampire Kisses, three Solitary Exiles, a single Pride's Fall, a single Sorrow, Withering Touch, two Cerebral Dominations, a Soul Marble, Pact of Pain, and two Zentos Inquisitors. What are some options here for Motivation? I really like either Solitary Exile or Vampiric Kiss as tech against the more aggressive form of the Blood Diamond matchup. Uh, Solitary Exile is nice because it does void uh, cards, and so things that would be you know, brought back again and again by ethereal callers are suddenly off the table. Uh, similarly, I like Vampiric Kiss because you are looking at uh, what is more or less an aggro variant of the Blood Diamond uh, deck. And so Vampiric Kiss is great against aggro. It gives you a little bit of extra health and also takes care of a pesky troop. So those those are the, the cards I would gravitate towards uh, mostly. Uh, on the second side, Zentos Inquisitor is not bad. If you can you know, reduce the attack of a troop, it stops becoming quite as useful. Let's take a look at Jakisha's reserves, playing with three Solitary Exiles, two Inquisitions, a Meek, two Prides Fall, three Withering Touch, two Deathless Guardians, a single Frost Wizard, and a Hope Heart, Hope Heart Unicorn. What are some options here for Jakisha? 
Well, under so many vampire princesses, uh, meek or, uh, you know, with the angel's pride's fall seems like <laughs> a, a viable option. If you want to uh, cut, uh, go right down the middle, you could, of course, toss in some solitary exiles. Same deal. You get to void things and they do not come back unless, uh, well, unless you start putting boxes and boxes and boxes. We might see some of that action uh, in game number two. All right, so here we go into game number two. The motivation is up one to nothing against Jakisha. Jakisha will have the option to play first. Uh, we'll go ahead and look, take a look at starting hands for both players. Remember, Jakisha trying to eke out this victory. No gladiator has been defeated yet in the casting coliseum. Jakisha does decide to go first. Let's take a look at opening hands for the motivation. Double blood shard, diamond shard, then tail to brood priest, eight inquisition, a Vampire Princess and a kill for the opposite side for Jakisha. A Blood Shard, Diamond Shard, Solitary Exile, two Ethereal Callers, a Shroom Shaw, and a Valiant Escort. Diamond is played. Valiant Escort is on the board for Jakisha and passes the turn over to the Motivation. And who draws a kill and will play a Blood and pass the turn. You know, the early Inquisition is uh, just so strong. We've seen that again and again with some of these uh, Blood players. Just really great starting hands. Draw for Jakisha is an Inquisition of his own. We'll play a Blood Shard. Unfortunately, not able to use Inquisition. We'll swing in with that Valiant Escort for two. That'll bring motivation down to 21 health. And Ashroom Shaw will join the party for Jakisha as he passes the turn to the motivation, who draws a Blood Shard. We'll play a second Blood. Inquisition is online. Now, you know, as, as the Inquisition comes down, you'll have to ask, will it remove an Inquisition or an actual threat? I mean, Inquisition does take care of uh, of one of his uh, his own questions as it were um also provides information which is perhaps more insidious i think the the call was the correct call to take that inquisition out he wants to keep those two double kills that fentail the brute priest and vampire princess so uh i think that was a good call draw for jakisha is a shard of retribution we'll see probably gonna go for that diamond threshold and he does Sitting at two open resources, double diamond, a single blood threshold. We'll activate the charge ability, champion ability on that Shroom Shaw. Going to swing in for three. This is going to bring motivation down to 18. Yeah, it's again, that, that aggro. But if he gets an early vampire princess down or a vampire king, that aggression can turn around fairly quickly. Speaking of vampire kings, the draw is a vampire king. We'll play out a diamond shard. Uh, motivation sitting at double blood and single diamond thresholds. Can use, uh, can play Fentio, can play Vampire Princess. Evil Spider Monster or Vampire Princess? <laughs> Which do you go with? <laughs> uh, it's a tough call. Decides to go with the Vampire Princess or Vampire Princess online for the motivation. He'll pass the turn back over to Jakisha. Now, interestingly, Vampire Princess doesn't provide pressure against the Solitary Exile. Uh, does not hit constants, only actions. So, um, you know, Jack Shaw could play it slow, take a little bit of damage, um, and hope to pull into an answer. Doesn't need to respond with the Solitary Exile straight away. Draw for Jakisha is a Diamond Shard, does have Solitary Exile and Double Ethereal Caller in hand. Looks like he's going to swing. No, nope, doesn't swing. Doesn't play anything and passes the turn over to Motivation. Motivation will play a diamond now at four resources. Double diamond, double blood threshold. Vampire Princess will swing in for two. And that'll bring Jakisha down to 17 and the motivation back up to 20. We'll see a diamond shard from Jakisha. And Fente will join the party for the motivation. And motivation will pass the turn back over to Jakisha. Now, Fenteo, in some ways, is a much bigger threat than the Vampire Princess in, in this particular matchup because, you know, a, a spider, Tarantula, just, it'll destroy your day. Solitary Exile will take care of the Fenteo, the Brood Priest. Plays out a Diamond Shard, sitting at one open resource. Will swing with the Valiant Escort and the Shroom Shaw. That's three damage. Bring the Motivation down to 17 health and will pass the turn back over to Motivation. His draw is a Vampiric Kiss. We'll play there a Blood Shard. Is that five? Yeah, seeing some of those sided in. It's a strong tech against a bunch of small body troops. Vampiric, uh, the Vampire Princess will swing in for two. Life totals were even, but now Jakisha down to 15. Motivation will gain two, go up to 19. Sees that ethereal caller. 
So, Adam, do you remember if that vampire princess was in uh, Motivation's opening hand? Because if it is, he will be able to turn that vampiric kiss uh, into a zero-cost action. It was. Ah, there you go. So five open resources going to swing in with that Shroom Shaw. It is, uh, it was uh, activated with the champion power. So when it dies, it will bring a phantom. Going to block with the Vampire King. That brings motiv uh, Motivation's life total to 22. Two Battle Hoppers are on the board for Jakisha. Ethereal Caller going to bring back the Shroom Shaw. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not a great position to be in, but at the very least, you can prevent uh, your health total from going down. Deja vu. Here is the <laughs> first free Angel of Dawn for the motivation. Nothing better than getting a free Angel of Dawn uh, and going to attack phase. It looks like Vampire Princess, Vampire King, the combo coming in for five damage. More importantly, if that Vampire King hits, 50% chance to hit that Ethereal Collar. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got to feel like blocking at least the Vampire King is a solid move for, for Jackie Shaw here, but it's it's a tough position to be in. You've only got so many. <gasps> He's going for it. Going to activate for the free Vampiric Kiss on the Ethereal Caller. He's going to gain two health from that as well. Oh, the 50-50 you know, gamble is is what's so incredible here i mean jackie shaw is rolling the dice if he loses that ethereal caller i don't know how he's going to come back short of a board reset kill on the valiant escort resolving damage motivation goes to 27 health versus the cases 12. And he dodged it. Ethereal Caller still in hand. Wow. Jakisha will play out a Blood Shard at six resources. Four Diamond Threshold. Two Blood will play the Ethereal Caller. Going to find a troop in his crypt and bring it back. Looks like he's going to pick a Phantom that has the ability to bring another Phantom back when it's gone. Putting the Champion ability on it. That means if that Phantom dies, two more Phantoms will take its place. Jakisha will pass the turn to the motivation. Draws a vampiric kiss. Well, so he's, he's back in that holding pattern, right? He's got to find some way to curb this aggression with only 12 health. Uh, he can only take a couple of blows. Nine damage inbound. A vampire king, a vampire princess, and an angel of dawn inbound. Jakisha triple blocks the princess, but uh, vampiric kiss is going to take care of that ethereal caller. Gain two life. He goes to 29. And both phantoms are going to go down. But when two are gone, two more are going to come back in its place. Shard of Retribution is revealed. Motivation sitting comfortably at 34 health. Jakisha at five as the turn passes back over to Jakisha. Draws a Golden Avenger. We'll play it. Now this might turn things around. Golden Avenger crucially can block um, any of these guys and uh, come out ahead. Before the end of Jakisha's turn, that kill will Take care of the Golden Avenger. And the Mask of the Avenger goes into Jakisha's hand. Draw four. The motivation is a soul marble. So for, for those who aren't familiar with Mask of the Avenger, it can be used to turn any troop into the Golden Avenger again. So you can keep having it come back over and over and over again um, as long as you have troops on board. Jakisha lets the Vampire King go through. Is down to two health. Soul Marble is the play for the motivation. It's going to go ahead and pump in three charges and pass the turn back over to Jakisha. Needs to draw an answer here for this board state from motivation. Draws a kill and has Mask of the Golden Avenger. Oh, it's or Mask of the Avenger. away. Mask of the Avenger on the Battle Hopper. Draw for motivation is a diamond shard. That'll bring him up to six resources, triple diamond, triple blood threshold, attack phase. Everything's coming across the board to Jakisha. The kill will be able to stall one of the troops, the Golden Avenger the other, but somebody's getting through. 
Indeed, it looks like the kill is going to take out the Vampire King. Golden Avenger will take care of the Angel of Dawn, but unfortunately for Jakisha, Vampire Princess is going to finish it. And Motivation takes this matchup two to nothing against Jakisha in the final match of the Casting Coliseum. Our gladiators are victorious. No one has been able to defeat them. Great matchup there between Jakisha and the Motivation. What a game, to be sure. I mean, if nothing else, it was really interesting to see how these two variants of what are essentially the same deck, you know, we call them um, blood and diamond, like a blood diamond deck, as if that is the same kind of deck. And yet there are so many variants. It's the great thing about Hex, and it's the great thing about a TCG.